Hello humans, it's just Martine and today we're going to be reading some free sci-fi books by women. <laughs> I'm super stoked for this video. I got the idea from my friend Nicoletta. She suggested it on my first Project Gutenberg video and chef's kiss, the perfect Project Gutenberg idea. Yes, I will warn you when I tell you the authors of these books, I had to look some of them up because I wanted to make sure they were women and because of the fact that these are older books, understandably, some of these women used pen names to be taken more seriously, to pose as men writing books, so more power to them. We're gonna read their books, it's going to be great. And then there are some familiar names and stuff. I am excited for each one of these books in a way I cannot describe. I love sci-fi, but I feel like I do not read enough of it is any amount of sci-fi too much. I don't know. And I haven't, I would say, read really old sci-fi like i've read some of the staples of the genre like i've read hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy i've read some terry pratchett and ender's game is one of my favorite books of all time and i've read some of the more modern popular ones like illuminate files but like i had never heard of any one of these books and i'm stoked some of the options that came up i was like yeah i know that book and i've read it like frankenstein or whatever but we're still gonna have mary shelley because she deserves her moment in the sun let's jump into the five books that i will be reading for this challenge okay so i have my computer up here i downloaded the five books from project gutenberg so i'm gonna go through them one by one i'm not gonna tell you what they're about yet because that would ruin all the fun of the rest of this video but the first one very fitting for the year that we've had i'm filming this on the second to last day of 2020, but you're gonna see it in 2021. So currently in 2020, this feels very much like the year we've been having. It's called Plague Ship by Andre Norton. That is a pen name. The second one, A World is Born by Lee Brackett. Number three, Homesick by Lynn Venable. Number four, Anthem by Anne Rand. Rand? Anne Rand? Anne Rand? I'm so sorry, Anne Anne. And last but not least, The Last Man by Mary Shelley. Did it sound like I called her Barry Shelley? I definitely said Mary Shelley, but I can't speak. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, then you know this about me. So those are the five books. I'm excited to start reading them. Let's do it. I just spent probably less than 10 minutes reading Homesick by Lynn Venable, which is a short story. And basically all I can tell you about it is like the premise is basically what would happen to men if they came back to earth after spending 30 years in space, because it's like a 10 page short story. And so if I tell you literally anything else, it spoils it. Not that it can really be spoiled. Like when it's a 10 page short story, there's, there's not much plot, but still it's interesting to find out some things by reading it because that's the whole point of the story is reading it. So <laughs> I'm making no sense. One thing that I thought was interesting about this short story, since I'm specifically doing this challenge that is science fiction written by women from Project Gutenberg, is that the entire cast of this short story was comprised of male astronauts. I'm going to look up Lynn Venable right now. Lynn Venable is short for Marilyn Venable. Basically, she wrote lots of short fiction and then um, a couple of chapter books. Is she still alive? A couple years ago, she had really big glasses. So she was born in 1927 and one of her short stories, one I'm not reading for this challenge called Time Enough to Last, was adapted for one of the 1959 episodes of The Twilight Zone, which is interesting. And that short story was apparently published, this is from Wikipedia, so uh, my bad. That short story, not the one that I read, was apparently published the same year that Fahrenheit 451 was and has like similar themes. So now I might need to read that short story um, in the future. But I mean, I liked this short story and I honestly don't read enough short stories. So I might have to see how many of her other works are available on Project Gutenberg. The one that I read, Homesick, was included in the Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine in 1952. She once said, someone once asked me, why do you write these things? Why do you like to scare yourself? I said, I don't scare myself, I scare other people. <laughs> the last we heard from her was in 2012. She was living in a retirement community in California. So I hope she's doing okay with all this COVID mess, but that's really cool. I like her now. That's the first one done. Oh, and I gave it four stars. I gave Homesick four stars. It was good. Good start. I just read A World is Born by Lee Brackett. It's a short story. I gave it 1.5 out of five stars, primarily because I don't like the idea of giving anything one stars, but I was kind of tempted. Not because it was poorly written necessarily. I just, I literally, it couldn't stick to my brain. The words and my brain, they didn't go well. And it was basically what felt like just a high speed chase for 30 pages and that's it, but like on a different planet. This basically starts with a man 
whose name I already forget, even though I finished reading this like two minutes ago. And he is doing prison work on what I believe is Mercury, if I'm remembering correctly. Someone else in the review said Mars and I was like, I for sure know it said Mercury. Again, it just didn't stick, so either one of us could be wrong, really. And um, he wanted to escape, and so he tries. And then the entire plot unfolds, and that's why it was basically a, a high-speed chase the whole time. But it got weird in ways that, again, I just couldn't comprehend. Like, I've read the words on the page, and I was like, and they just didn't go in my brain. So, some books are like that. To anyone who likes this short story, I wish I could be you. It just wasn't for me. Too much action, to be honest. Action things don't stick in my brain. Book two out of five, done. Woohoo! I'm on to my third read, which is a novella called Anthem by... And Rand. Anyway, the basic premise so far is that clearly something has happened to Earth, but like humans are still inhabiting the Earth, but they're very different and they seem to all individually identify as multiples, which is interesting. And at a certain age, they're assigned their specific job just like they are in The Giver. I especially feel the connection in the beginning of this novella to The Giver because I was listening to The Giver to fall asleep just last night. So that's weird. So far, it's interesting. I can't help but imagine, I know this is completely wrong, but I cannot help but imagine with the plural singulars, this like weird monster from, I don't know what it's from, but one of those silly monsters from a silly monster movie uh, that just kind of throws its arms around. I don't know why, but that's all I can imagine. The premise is that this being that we're following, which has a complex name that I can't remember because it's all numbers and stuff, is assigned a job and then one day when they're on the job they find something intriguing and just kind of continues from there. 25% down, let's see how this novella is. So far, way better than the last short story I read for this challenge, so that's always good. I just finished Anthem by Anne Rand and I'm giving it four out of five stars. It's very close on the border between a short story and a novella because it was like the edition that I am put on Goodreads, even though I read it like digitally, was 56 pages. I don't really know where the qualifiers start and stop for that, but I thought it was really interesting, an examination of like collectivism versus individualism, as well as an examination of what it means to be human and what it means to be an individual, but obviously from a futuristic and slightly dystopic perspective. So that was interesting. It was well-written and intriguingly written and yeah, had lots of good elements going for it. I even like took screenshots of two quotes. So good stuff, good stuff. I wish I had more to say about it, honestly. I enjoyed it. If you're looking for some sci-fi, this is a good recommendation. It's not long, so if you are unsure, like. Can just go in knowing it's it's not long and it's also not like set in space or such it's not maybe scary hard sci-fi in that way so maybe that would help if you don't read much sci-fi or something i think i have three of five done for this so we're on good track i'm about 20 percent of the way into plague ship by andre norton and i'll be honest I'm not liking it <laughs> unfortunately it is i think the longest of the works in this list of works that I'm reading for this video. And I think it will definitely take me the longest to read, not because of the length, because when I actually sit down to read it, I read it pretty quickly, but because I am not reaching to pick it up because I am not liking it. I honestly am failing to understand what is going on. It has been several days now since I've read it and I was already confused at the time. I believe they're hunting something now. Like their names, I couldn't tell you. I think there's one named Dane. I also think I read Dune a little too close to this because for some reason I keep thinking that the planet is Arrakis and it's not, I don't know the planet's name. Usually this is not an issue for me, but I'm just, I'm not getting it. And I feel like it's disjointed in a way. I don't know, I'm just not liking it. Hopefully I'll read more of it soon and maybe I'll have a more positive update then. But for now, it also so far has nothing to do with the plague. And that was the most interesting part to me. And I'm pretty sure like I read the synopsis before and it mentioned that there was a plague. And if so, we're 20% of the way in and I haven't heard anything about it and it's disappointing. I'm at the 50% mark now and there's definitely a plague now. And honestly, that has made it a lot better. I hated the beginning, but I think where we are right now is pretty interesting, so. All right, in the craziest turn of events, it's early May and I've just finished Plague Ship. Well, I did like two days ago, but I was not in the right headspace to vlog. So I'm going to update you now on Plague Ship. It was very confusing going like, I would say, 
maybe one and a half months without reading it and then jumping in at like the 75% mark. That's neither here nor there and I don't honestly believe that it affected the 2.5 out of 5 stars that I ended up giving it. Essentially, the middle of this book, I felt like lots happened but also nothing happened and I wasn't really sure what was happening. And the beginning was really slow and hard to get into which made it difficult. So as soon as there was plot, I was like, ah yes, and then it and then I was like, Bleh. and then it picked up again at the end. And honestly, I forget exactly how it ended and it's been two days. So it wasn't that memorable, clearly. That means that I finished my second to last one. I just have the Mary Shelley book left. The Last Man by Mary Shelley. So I'll be starting that in the next few days. But for now, that's my update. <laughs> how fitting is it that the final book that I'm going to read for this Project Gutenberg is called The Last Man by Mary Shelley? I started it the other night and to be honest with you, I have literally no idea what's going on. It's about this guy and I think this kingdom and that's pretty much as much as my brain is managing to retain as I've been reading it. Granted, I've been reading it primarily before bed, which is likely a bad decision for memory purposes, but I'm not so convinced that it would be sticking either way. Also, I'm over 10% of the way into this book and every synopsis online I've read, whether it be like click details about this book in the Apple library or look at the Goodreads page, the synopsis and reviews insist it's about a plague. 10% in, there's been no mention of a plague at all or anybody, I, I think we've just had one sick character, but I don't know if it's related to the plague. There's no foreshadowing. I feel like that there's a plague coming unless I'm missing something drastic, which I may very well be. Maybe there's a plague happening right now and I have no idea. Totally possible with the amount of attention I've been able to pay to this read so far. I can't say that I'm loving it, but I am interested for the plague aspect to happen. And this is an issue that I had with another one of these books. I had this issue with the last book that I read for this plague ship, which has the name plague in the title. And the plague didn't happen until well past 10% of the book. And then it happened kind of all of a sudden. So I'm wondering if the same thing's going to happen in this book. But for right now, no plague that I know of. And um, hard to pay attention to. So we'll see what happens next. Finally, 37% of the way through this book about a plague, the word plague appears for the first time. I finally finished The Last Man by Mary Shelley. I'm giving it 2.5 out of 5 stars, probably because my expectations were a little different going in. I expected a story about a plague and the last man on earth and what happened once he's the last man on earth. What I got instead was a long beginning about his happy life before, a little past the two-thirds mark of the book, finally being introduced to the plague and then spending the rest of the book watching how the main character became the last man as opposed to like all the implications of that afterwards. We got like a chapter of that. There were some really slow parts. There were some other enjoyable parts. In general, it just wasn't quite what I went in expecting. And I wish I had more to say about it since I spent all that time reading it for this. I, I don't. Like, the point of the story was unclear to me. I was unsure whether or not it wanted to be a plague apocalyptic story or whether it just wanted to be a book about this man and his friends and family. Because again, it wasn't until like 37% of the book that the plague first swept in. I'm fine with you like setting up the characters before you get the plot rolling necessarily, but that was just way too much of it. And that's even in comparison to the plague ship, which one of my problems with the plague ship was that it took too long for there to be a plague for something called the plague ship. It took almost twice that amount of time for the plague to show up here. So I don't know. I just, it wasn't what I went in expecting. If you're going in expecting a like slower atmospheric read, you're going in wanting the part of it that was like kind of autobiographical about like Percy Shelley and Lord Byron, then like, yeah, you're going to enjoy it more. But if you go in expecting a story about this guy who's the last man alive on earth, like that's not the main focus of it at all. Anyway, this was my last book for this specific video. In order from highest ranked to lowest ranked, the highest ranking I gave was for Anthem with four stars and then Homesick, four stars, The Last Man, 2.5 stars, Plague Ship, 2.5 stars, and A World is Born with 1.5 stars. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and comment down below which of these do you seem most interested in? What are your thoughts on my reactions? What are your favorite staples in the sci-fi genre? And subscribe for more reading, writing, and college lifestyle content. And until next time, bye humans, bye!